Hi, it's Tristan from Ultimate Queen Celebration, and I'm here at the Levoy Theater, about to do another show with Ultimate Queen Celebration, starring Mark Martell. That's why they call him Mr. Fahrenheit. And I've already done one video called How to Sound Like Brian May, and I thought today, just for the heck of it, I'd do another one called How to Sound Like David Bowie, because that's one of my duties in this show. I sing the Bowie part in Under Pressure. And aside from the technical aspects, like warming up, and finding your diaphragm, that's all stuff that you can find elsewhere on YouTube. Uh, there's a couple of tricks uh, that I do to sort of get me into character and just, you know, producing that tone. And... Jesus, that guy sounds a lot like Freddie Mercury. Never mind, that's a silly idea. I'm going to do this video at home. First of all, if you're looking to mimic any artist, I think it's very helpful to find that artist, find him or her within yourself. In this case, kind of find your inner David Bowie. If you were to make a Venn diagram, say, there's probably a big area in the middle where the two of you overlap. For me, it would be a love of rock and roll, drama, and nice frocks. One thing that you may have noticed is that my speaking voice is very different from David's. Aside from the fact that we're both baritones, sonically, we really don't have that much in common. This has to do with a number of factors. Um, this physical instrument, it, the actual shape of his face, you may notice in any photographs or videos of David singing that his mouth is actually kind of wide, unlike mine. So they kind of swallow my words. They're sort of back in my throat, whereas David has got sort of a nasal penetrating quality. Uh, was one way to accomplish this is actually kind of widen my mouth and sing through the smile. I also project up through my sinuses, which helps give it that sort of nasal cutting quality. It also helps to kind of understand his culture and his upbringing and the influences he had coming up. It doesn't hurt to actually kind of examine uh, what I call a Mockney accent. It's kind of like almost a parody of Cockney, it's sort of a cultural signifier. In America, it became almost kind of shorthand for British charm, especially since Dick Van Dyke did a terrible Mockney accent in Mary Poppins. It's accomplished by exaggerating certain vowels, the A sound, for example. Will you stay in a lover's story? If you stay, you won't be sorry, because we believe in you. Another thing to look at is his vibrato, which is broad and almost theatrical. I think this stems from an infatuation with Anthony Newley, who was a very popular singer in Great Britain in the 60s. Other influences worth looking at are Scott Walker, uh, not the terrible American politician, the uh, genius visionary, very dramatic uh, baritone, who was popular in Great Britain in the 60s and went on to have sort of an art music career in the 70s and 80s. It helps to sharpen and intensify your tone um, with kind of like a, not only widening your mouth and singing through the front of your face, but also kind of forcing it up through your palate. That can actually make it sound like you've got more range than you do, like you're singing higher than you are. It's the terror of knowing what this world is about. Watching some good friends scream, let me out. None of those notes are actually very high, but because of the tone that I'm imparting with this kind of constriction uh, makes it sound um, more dramatic and like I'm singing higher than I actually am. Another thing to look at is this penchant for drama, which is what I call hushed intensity. Uh, you don't always necessarily assault people with volume. In the quiet bits, it helps to sort of draw them in. Turn away from it all like a blind man. There's that constriction again. It almost sounds like a emotion. Sat on a fence, but it don't work. If you add a bit of breath to things, as if you're whispering, it automatically draws people in and for, kind of forces them to listen. Keep coming up with love, but it's so slashed and toward. You might have noticed that I added almost a little bit of a hiccup at the end, kind of at the back of my throat, which also kind of lends it drama and intensity. Insanity laughs under pressure, we're cracking! David himself was a very accomplished mimic. I encourage you to look up an outtake, one of his recording sessions, where just for a laugh, and I guess to amuse the engineer, he just went through a whole slew of impersonations, including, well, as you might expect, Tiki Pop, but also um, Bruce Springsteen. It's hilarious and also spot on. Uh, he had an incredible ear. That's something people don't really realize about Mark as well. I mean, they 
know that he can do Freddy incredibly, probably better than anybody else on the planet. But I've heard, at Soundcheck, I've heard him do Seal. I've heard him do Elton John, Phil Collins. There's literally almost nothing he can't do. On a side note, I don't think that mimicry, although it is a talent in itself, and it's something that can be exploited commercially, does not by any means preclude artistic ability. Obviously not in David's case and not in Mark's case either. Uh, he's actually an incredible songwriter and I encourage you to seek out his original stuff, not only with Down Here, but also solo. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this very short video. Uh, I'm off on a camping trip, so I guess I'll see you guys when I get back. If you like what you hear, if you like what you see, if you find it useful at all, then please hit like and subscribe, and definitely ding that bell button next to the subscribe button to be apprised of new content as it is delivered. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.